When visiting a website, many of its elements are the same across its different pages, the nav bar and footer, and different scripts and styles. If you try to copy and paste these elements into each page of your theme, you're going to have a bad time. Not only is it just time consuming and error prone, it's just outright tedious. There's got to be a better way. That's where ghost default.hps file comes in. It packs in all of those common elements into one place and allows you to have very easy and convenient control over those elements. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how default.hps works and which elements are common to it. So without further ado, let's get into it. In this tutorial, we are going to look at the default.hps file of a fictional publication called Of Record, which I have open on the screen here. And um, while their tutorials will go into more detail about creating this theme, uh, what we're going to focus on today is specifically the default.hps file. So we'll pop over to the code editor, and I have open here the Of Record theme. And what we're going to talk about is how to create and use the default.hps file. So the default template, it's a special file in a ghost theme and using it simple. We want to go to the root of the theme, add a new file and call it default.hps. And now this name is essential because it's how ghost recognizes this file um, when it's rendering your content. Now what I'm going to do is paste in the content for this file and what we'll do in this tutorial is go through each line of it. But what is the default.hps file? It's a handlebars file and it acts as the base layer for your theme. And that means that all other content gets inserted into it. You can think of this default template as a picture frame. Although you might change the content inside it, you might have one picture of your dog and then another picture of dog and then another picture of your dog, the frame always stays the same. Likewise, default.hps frames all your content from the home page to the post page to the about page to everything else. Default.hps is rendered on every page of your site and then that means that the template should include those elements that typically appear on every page of your site. In the next section, we'll look at an example of this template, this example here more in detail, and all of the elements included in it. All right, so here we are inside of Of Records uh, theme, and specifically their default.hps file. What we can do here is delete out all the content, except for the kind of top level tags. And I wanna do this so you can kind of see something here. So when we remove out the content from this file, we can see that at its highest level, it's the outline, the structure of a standard HTML page. And this makes sense, right? Because again, the, the crucial concept of a default.hps file is that these are elements that are going to show up on every page. And if we want that page to be valid HTML, then it needs to include these elements. And so rather than trying to put them into each of the individual templates, like the post template, the tag template, et cetera, we can put it right into default.hps. All right, so I've put this content back now, and let's just walk through the beginning of it to understand better what's going on. So at the very top here, we see doc type HTML, and again, remember, we want this on every page, so we include it here in default, and this just informs the browser that we are using HTML or for the very long-winded hypertext markup language. The next tag is our HTML tag. This opens up the document root, and here we see that we have a lang attribute that sets the language for the publication, and we're using um, ghosts handlebars site object which pulls in the language as it's set in Ghost Admin. And so here I can um, hover over it. And so I'm using the VS Code uh, Ghost extension. There'll be a link below to use that, but it gives us a little bit of what the site helper does and the different attributes that are possible. And it also um, 
Another way that you can use this if you have the extension installed is if you uh, click site, I'm mean, sorry, if you type site and hit tab, it'll actually give you all the options to auto complete uh, the different possible properties that are available on this site object, which is uh, really convenient because it's hard to remember all of those. Here though, we're just using locale to bring in the site language. And so this will tell the browser, search engines, etc., which language your site's in. All right, next we're gonna dissect the head and the body to start to see the guts of this thing. The head tag is used to include metadata about the page and load assets for it. When we refer to assets, uh, we mean things like style sheets, your CSS and JavaScript, uh, as well as this could be images or preloading images or fonts um, or other third-party scripts like analytics. All right, so let's walk through uh, some of these things that are included here in this head tag. So first we have two uh, meta tags and the first one has the care set um, attribute, which is set to UTF-8. This just tells the browser your character encoding and in, you need to have it as, as high up in the head as possible to ensure that all the text is interpreted correctly and outputs correctly. Next is the viewport uh, meta tag. And what this does is ensures that your content looks good on every device. It's sort of the cornerstone of responsive design. It's just kind of a standard thing to have. Next, we get to the title tag. And the title tag here is a little interesting because it includes a handlebars helper called meta title. And what this does is it outputs different titles depending on the context of your publication. So whether you're on a post page, an index page, etc., cetera. And uh, Ghost works some magic in the background to put together a, a nice comprehensible title. And this title is what shows up in your browser in the tab. And it can also be used by bots and search engines. So it's an important thing to have in there, of course. Um, and this is a way to make sure that it outputs correctly no matter which part of your publication you're on. Next, we come to a link tag and a script tag. And these both are bringing in those assets we talked about, the assets that are part of the theme. And um, an important thing to notice here is that we're using the asset helper to bring in those assets. Um, and this is required in Ghost. And the reason for it is that when you use this, it uh, allows you to cache these resources and importantly, cache bust them when um, you upload new versions. And Ghost does that by um, appending a query parameter on here that allows it to know when versions change. But um, you can see here that it's referencing a place in our theme built index. And we can pop over to our um, our file explorer to kind of see what's going on here. So what you want to do is you always want to put your assets in an assets folder. And then we have our built assets and built assets are ones that have been minified and um, if necessary, polyfilled or transpiled for um, wide compatibility. But anyway, so it's referencing, for instance, this index CSS file here in the built folder or this index file here in um, for the JavaScript, and that's how you use the asset helper. Um, but it's re again required whenever you're you're loading an asset like this. At the very end here is the ghost head helper, and this is a ghost helper that's required. Um, if you don't put this in your theme, your theme's not going to work right. But what this does is it loads additional metadata. So all the structured data that's important for SEO, as well as different scripts and styles that are necessary for Ghost to function properly. So this should always be the last item in head. And uh, with that, we covered everything in head and we're now ready to move on to the body. All right. So we're here now into the body class. This is where the content for your site begins to come in. Um, we have another helper here on the body. So it's a, it's a CSS class and a body class. And what body class does is it outputs a dynamic class based on the context. So when you're on your homepage, it's gonna output this class home template 
When you're on a post page, it's going to output the class post template. And this is really helpful because it allows you to conditionally style things based on which context you're in. Uh, so that's a very helpful class uh, helper to include on your body. Next, we finally get start getting to some more uh, content and we have a wrapper class called viewport, OR viewport. And just a note here that this OR is a prefix that is, is an optional convention, but it's one that most ghost themes you'll find have. And it stands for of record, the name of the theme. And what it does is, is two things. One, um, it allows you to make sure that your classes don't uh, conflict with any native uh, ghost classes or third-party library classes. So uh, let's say that you loaded a library that also had a viewport class. Uh, there could be some conflict and then unintended results from that. This allows you to make sure that all of your classes don't conflict with anything else. But then also, if something's going on and you're trying to debug, you know that this class is in your theme because you've prefixed it with the OR. Um, so it's just a nice convention to do. And specifically what this viewport class is doing is it's making sure that your footer stays at the bottom of the page. Um, if you've ever seen one of these sites, and let's see if we can uh, even try to mimic it here. Let's open this post. And um, what we can do, so we have to see, here's this class OR viewport, and you can even see here the classes or the um, properties of it. So importantly, this class of min height 100 VH, this means that make sure that this class is at least 100% uh, percent of the viewport height. So that means make sure that as tall as this is, make sure it's also that tall. And then we set a display of flex on here with a flex direction of column and a space between. And the space between is sort of the magic here. And this means that it's going to spread things out so that they fill the available space. And so let me show you, for instance, if we didn't have the set, what might happen. All right, so I've deleted all the content inside of here. You can see that this footer is still at the ground and that's because we have this OR viewport um, active. If I disable it, you can see that that footer jumps way up and it looks like when you have your pants pulled up too high. Um, so this allows you to make sure that this footer is always at the bottom where it belongs. All right, jumping back in here, we now are going to get into the navigation and we'll talk about that in the next section. All right, we now come to the nav bar of our site, but there's something that we need to notice first. So come back to our site here on a post page, for instance, you see that we just have this simple nav bar up at the top, which has our the name of the publication, uh, some links, subscribe, search. But if we come to something like gear, it's a little bit of a different layout. We have this big picture that goes all the way to the top of the viewport. Um, and the color of the text of the nav bar changes. So if we come back to our uh, default.hbs file, we can see how we're controlling for that. So we were using this is helper here, which tests for the context. And so what this says is if this is a post or a page, bring in our nav bar partial. And a partial is just a reusable bit of code. Uh, it's over here in our partials folder. So it's bringing in this nav bar per, uh, partial, and we'll talk about partials in another video. Um, but if it's not a post or a page, so if it's, for instance, a tag page or an index page or the home page, then we're bringing in our header partial, and that's the big um, image with the different color nav bar. And so we can have this conditional um, rendering, which is really cool to make, you know, really advanced and sophisticated layouts using a simple tool like this is helper. So that is how we bring in our nav bar and that allows us to have the same nav bar on every page. We finally come to the body tag 
And this is a special tag. You can see here that it has um, three curly braces on the either side instead of two. Um, and again, so what's the most important thing to take away from this tutorial about default.hbs is it's, it's a base layer, it's a layout, it's a way for you to include reusable elements that are going to show up on every page of your, um, of your site. And that means also that we need somewhere to put in the stuff that changes. And bodies really the it's the placeholder for where that stuff comes in. So what this means is that we have our default page, but then if we're on a post page, for example, this post template is going to be rendered in the default inside of the default template. And that's what this top tag here means. So we see default and that default is referring to the default template. And there's a kind of like the little uh, arrow there that's pointing in. And you can think of that as it's going to show up right here. It's going to be inserted right into the spot. It's almost as if we took all of this, we copied it, and then we took this out and we pasted it. That's exactly what's happening. Um, but instead of having to do that in this you know, file getting really large and messy, uh, we can do this use this body tag in conjunction with this default tag and let Ghost take care of that messy part for us. All right, we're getting near the end here and um, that brings us to the footer. So let's take a look at what this looks like on the actual theme. So if you scroll down here to the very bottom, uh, this is our footer down here. So we have our the name of our publication, copyright symbol, the year, the current year, and then we have some um, of our secondary navigation items. So these are the secondary navigation items that you set in Ghost Admin. And then finally, we have our Powered by Ghost tagline. And this is, again, this is something that we want on every uh, page. So it's something that's perfect to include in the default.hbs file. So let's see how each of those elements are working. All right, so here we have uh, the footer and then we have this container class and the container class has some styles to help um, make sure that that content's the right size, centered um, and has a little bit of padding. And then we come to the first element of the footer, which is um, again, that the, the name of the publication. So that's this, again, this site object with the title bringing it in. We have the um, HTML entity for for the copyright symbol. And then finally, uh, the date helper. So this is another helper in Ghost, which we can hover over here with the VS Code extension that will um, allow you to pull in a date and format it in so many different ways. You can see that um, in the docs. But here, what we're doing is we're not giving it a specific value. So for instance, if you were on a post page, you could bring in the uh, year or the date that the post was published and format that. But because we don't give it any value to um, uh, of a date, it will just pull in the current date, the date of today, and it will format it um, based on whatever you say. So here we're just giving it the four, we want the four digit year. And so that's how it's gonna show up. And so again, come back here, we have of record copyright 2023. And the kind of nice thing about doing it this way, rather than saying copyright right of, and, and writing out, for instance, uh, 2023, is that this will always be up to date. You'll never have to update it manually. Uh, you're just always kind of good to go. All right, so the next one is we're using another ghost helper called the navigation helper. And you can look at the docs to see exactly how this is output but an important attribute we have on here is type equals secondary. And what that means is that there's the primary navigation. So to show you that, that's this one up at the top, but then we also have a secondary navigation at the bottom. Um, many users will put things here like terms and conditions or contact or write for us or privacy policy, that sort of stuff, the more businessy things um, in the secondary, secondary navigation. And the way that you can access that is by using this navigation helper um, and specifying type equals secondary. So nothing too, too crazy there, but it's a, a really nice convenience helper to know about. 
And then finally, the last part is just straight to standard HTML. We have a paragraph tag powered by Ghost with just the, uh, the anchor link. And we have the target set to blank so that it opens in a new tab. Nothing too exciting. That's the whole footer. And uh, we also have another helper that's the complement to Ghost head. This is Ghost foot. And this is a, another one that outputs important scripts. It should be at just the body of the, near the body, uh, closing body tag. But it's, um, it's really helps when you have, you're using code injection and you're using the code injection site footer. Um, this is where that content will show up. And then we just have the, the rest of the closing tags, the body closing tag and the HTML, the HTML closing tag. And then that's it. You're at the bottom of the default.hbs file. You made it. You now have a comprehensive overview of Ghost's default template. The base layer is a key building block for any and all theme development. And since it provides the underlying structure for every page, it's the perfect place for any element that shows up everywhere, like meta tags, scripts, style sheets, navigation bars, and footers. The real reason to use it though, is its practicality. Default.hbs saves you time, minimizes errors, and makes you an efficient theme creation machine. And now that you've completed this tutorial and have a better understanding of how ghost themes work, you're well on your way to becoming that machine. So don't let the learning stop here. Explore other tutorials to learn more tips and tricks. Sign up for the Build with Ghost newsletter for a daily dose of inspiration or connect with a vibrant community of ghost enthusiasts over on the forum. That's it for now. See you in the next one.